Good morning. Um, I've just been out to the shops to go and buy some stuff to start growing some plants because it's officially like middle of March, springtime, and I'm really excited to get doing gardening stuff this weekend. But I wanted to show you um, my dining table because I've actually had a few little updates since. It's pretty similar for the most part, but I have had a little swap out of the dining room chairs. Now these are from Dunelm and they've got this beautiful blue ticking pattern all over the chairs and they've got this kind of wing back style to them as well it's not too deep but they're super soft and then they've got that kind of oak style finish to the legs that matches the dining table and the bench as well and then i also i'm going to do a radiator cover there and i've decided i'm going to do some sort of shelving open shelving there so that i can make it just feel a little bit more intentional because at the minute it just feels like a big open blank space but yeah i'm gonna sort this table out and take everything off because i've actually bought a couple of bits gardening wise and i really want to put up some seeds so good i've made my own indoor potting table and um, which i really shouldn't be doing because i've got brand new dining chairs there but there's just something about my brain and the way it works that i always do stuff like that rob tells me off all the time i tend to gravitate to the prettiest areas of the house and just like cause chaos and mayhem and he he does tell me off but already lunchtime so i'm gonna make rob and i some lunch and you know what time it is already Hello Fresh, thank you so much for sponsoring this part of the video. You guys, if you've been here for a while, you know it's been years now that we've been using Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh is a meal kit delivery service, it comes straight to your door, you choose your meals depending on what you fancy and it all comes pre-portioned so you've got no waste. Depending on however many people you've got in your household, you can pick the portions for that size. You can also choose between like calorie conscious, quick cook meals, family friendly meals, if you're going to the gym and you're trying to get heavy on your protein you can double up on your protein in the meals and stuff as well so it is just so convenient and it takes the trouble out of everything to do with cooking and it's just a bit of fun when it comes to cooking in the kitchen especially if you're not really confident in the kitchen it comes with instructions and pictures and portions and it teaches you how to do everything so as always i've got you a special discount code i'll put it on the screen here for you it's shade 24 you can pop that in on the website or you can click my link which is in the description box or you can scan it this qr code here and that discount code is going to give you 60 percent off your first box 20% off your next two months worth of subscriptions and free gifts. And if you are a customer that cancelled your subscription more than 12 months ago, but you're feeling like you want to try HelloFresh again, then you can also use my discount code. You have to have cancelled more than 12 months ago, but you can apply my discount code and you're going to get the exact same discount as a new customer, which is fantastic. If you try it and it's not for you, that's fine. You can cancel at any time. So yeah, check it out. I'll leave everything on screen and in the description box for you. This is the main star of the show this is my new propagator this is on a heated tray i got it from b&q it was about 40 pounds but it is reusable i'm going to be able to grow so many seedlings on here i think the seedlings only really take about a couple of weeks to pop through so once they've grown and i'm able to pop them out into the garden i'll be able to reuse these and they're plastic so they're reusable but it's super super clever so it has a consistent heat that ups the temperature by about eight degrees. You also want to put this in a sunny spot as well, just so that the sun get into them, but seedlings need heat in order to grow properly. They've got this little twist here so you can ventilate each section and they're really quite spacious as well. So I reckon you could sow quite a lot of seeds in there, thin them out afterwards and plant them where you want to in your garden. We had a cherry plant last year and it worked so well, it grew so well. And I really wanted to try a bigger tomato this year. So we've got this beef steak one. Um, I've got some peppers. I started to grow peppers last year, but I planted them way too late. So they really started to come through, but they didn't get any color because the sun went away. And same with our chili plant as well. So I'm gonna get these ones sown early enough so that we can harvest them actually in the summer but yeah i got the sweet peppers and the hot ones sweet corn i'm obsessed with sweet corn so i really want to try and grow this myself for some reason i just feel like this will only grow in a really hot country but i mean it was 
in the shop so i'm sure we must be able to grow it here i also picked up some carrot some broccoli which i'm really excited to try this one is actually a quick and compact grower so i don't think we should have too much trouble trying to grow this i also have got some radish and some pak choy which we use a lot of because we have a lot of noodles and a lot of um kind of like asian soups and we've got some peas because i grew monge toots last year and they grew so so well but i want to try these ones because they've got a quite a more substantial pea inside and then some lettuce this is salad bowl red i'm going to get a green salad lettuce as well some spring onions um and then we've also got another type of radish over there then we've got some what are these called herbs now i already have these grown in the garden not this type but i already have a curly parsley and some thyme in the garden so i actually don't know if i'm going to sow these seeds but i've got them anyway to maybe try i'm going to go look at the state of the herbs outside and see if we should just start a new batch or if they can be saved and then on this side this is a side that i'm so excited for now these are all my flowers i've never ever grown flowers from seed before but look how beautiful my collections of flowers so i've got some ranunculus these are actually not seeds these are little bulbs would you call them bulbs i think so um they kind of look like spiders they're actually quite scary but they are so beautiful when they flower so i really wanted to get some of those i've got some salvia which i actually already have in the garden and i didn't realize i bought it last year but it's really good to pair with roses because i think it deters any aphids and stuff from the roses um, I've got some night scented stock and corn flour. I'm pretty sure these are quite tall plants. Um, so I just thought they'd be really nice. And they're very like um, fairy like. So they just kind of are very wispy and they just look really gorgeous. So I thought I'd put some of those in some containers. Uh, this section is a section I'm so excited for. So this is I've got Aster, Zinnia, Scabosia. Is that how you spell that? Scabiosa, scabiosa. I mean, the scabiosa looks a bit scary if you look too close, but it's really cute as a big bunch of flowers. Delphiniums and forget me nots. I also have phlox, two different types of it. This is honestly, I'm so excited to grow this. If they grow, I'm gonna be so happy. And then I also have got three different types of cosmos some white ones, some pink ones, and this yellow one. And then I've got three different types of sweet peas as well. Now, honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna get around to sowing all of these, growing them successfully. If I do, honestly, beginner's luck, because I know how hard it is to grow stuff from seed. But I'm gonna give it a good bash. So that is what this is here for today. I also just went to um, the range and picked up some bits. So Wilco is stocked in some other brands now so I've been into a couple of supermarkets where they've got Wilco stuff they must have just bought them all out before they went into administration but how cute is this I thought this would be good for using on you know the little propagator because it's just they're just mini tools so we've got a little rake a little fork and then a pointy spade and a more chubby spade as well <laughs> and then I also picked up this I mean I have got a lot of twine but I feel like you can never have enough twine but I really bought it for the scissors I have tried to find this pair of scissors before it's like an antique style and they're really expensive when you try and buy them from these companies online that sell aesthetic things and they're just a pair of scissors so I didn't want to go out and splash like 30 quid on these scissors anyway I got this set for 4 99 in the range so buzzing about that i picked up a spray bottle because with this propagator you need to keep the seedlings quite moist because that's how they germinate but you don't want to drown it obviously it's an electric appliance so you just need to kind of give it a light spritzing so i thought this can be my spritzer bottle and then i also have picked up some seed and cutting compost because to grow seedlings you actually need um so i've read a particular type of soil which is much more loose and so the seeds don't have to fight trying to establish their roots and then you can get this stuff called vermiculite which is it's like a really really delicate dusty bark very very small but you can put it on top of the soil after you've put your seedlings down and it helps to retain the moisture so another thing i bought a couple of gardening books um when was this literally like a couple of weeks ago from Sainsbury's actually I think I showed you on the vlog I bought a couple of these books and in all honesty I love reading but I just didn't know if I was going to read these so I thought they'd be better as like coffee table books however after doing some research and really getting excited about growing all my seeds I decided to take my books to bed last night along with my little gardening journal and I actually read 
um, the whole of the March section of the Almanac and I read half of the spring section of the How to Grow Your Flowers book and I've learned so much. So this is why I'm super excited to start doing the seedlings because I feel like I kind of know what I need to do. And it's, it's just that kind of feel good feeling of if it pays off, it's going to feel like so good. I'm going to feel so accomplished. And then, yeah, I have got this little gardening journal. I got this when I went to Amsterdam last year with QVC, um, but I'm actually genuinely going to use it to make notes. So what I did yesterday was write down, I'm such a nerd, honestly, I wrote down all of the definitions of annual, hardy annual, perennial, biennial, half and half, because on these seed packets, they've got so many different terms and I'm just like, what does that mean? Do I just sow it and hope for the best? Oh my God, if you've also clocked my old greenhouse <laughs> entangled in the garden, you didn't see that. <laughs> it needs to go, but I just haven't had a, a second to dismantle it because I tried to put it up again and it just crashed. So yeah, anyway, let's get this going. So I'm gonna put my books to the side, but I'm gonna reference my little perennial sewing time chart that I've made. And it says on the packet that they only need to be buried half a centimetre deep, so not very far at all. I'm actually, I can't find any useful things on the internet and I always hear gardeners say you should sow more than you think because you pick the best ones and you can discard of any that don't take or don't work and then we'll plant them out where they actually need to be. I'll be able to thin them out which means kind of really carefully breaking them apart so that I can plant them where I want them to go. Hey, wow. <laughs> Welcome to my laboratory. Laboratory. And then you pop the lid on. So it says on the instructions for this propagator, you leave the lid closed. So you have it open vented or closed vented. So you leave it closed until the seedlings start to come through. When you start to see them, you can slowly open it to let more air in. And then once it's all kind of, I think evaporated basically, there's no condensation and the seedlings look like they've taken well and they've established roots, then you can take it out and plant them out. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that closed because they need as much moisture as they can get. And there's my first little bowl. Put it on here. Plug it in, put it on a windowsill, and look, I can have seven different types of plant growing at the same time. Oh, it's heavy now. Ah, look at that. That's so fun. Um, I've sewn up all of my seeds. So if you are interested, um, just so that you get a sense of what I'm growing, I'm actually growing Sweet Pea Everlasting Mix, Phlox in Grandiflora Creme Brulee, which is stunning. Cosmos, 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 double Dutch white, stunning. And this one grows to 120 centimeters, crazy. Delphinium frosted skies, which grow to 100. Um, and they all flower around the same time, kind of like June, July through to October, September. Forget me not mystery rose, 75 centimeters high. Scabo Scabiosa drumsticks, 60 centimeters high. And Cosmos Xenia. 60 centimeters high. So I think we've got a good color range there. We've got some white, some cream, some pastels, lots of pastels, and then a, a real pop of pink. But, um, well, and also the sweet pea, so much more pink as well. But I do have so many more colorful flowers that I do want to plant. I just haven't got enough room for all of them. I kind of do wish I had another one of those things. I'm, I'm, I don't know whether it's efficient and monetarily valuable for me to get another one. I think actually I'm gonna get one more to do all of my vegetables. Cause I was speaking to Rob when we were 
chatting earlier and I was showing him this when these all come to germinate it's going to take like between 10 and 30 days maybe even a bit more depending on how well they germinate so for that time I can't grow anything else I can't germinate and start off any other seeds whereas I could potentially get one more of them and have one of them for flowers and then one of them for vegetables but then it's kind of that thing of okay but then when I've got everything out in the garden I'm just gonna have two devices sitting there is it a bit wasteful um, or I could just buy or similarly I could just buy just a heated mat because you can buy those as well but yeah I need to have a think about it anyway I've still got so many more flowers to pot up and many more vegetables and um, oh I'm actually going to go back over each of the little pots with some vermiculite because I forgot to put that on but it just needs a little handful so I'm just going to spread that over the top of each of them I think it just helps to keep the moisture in maybe a little bit of warmth <clears throat> hello it is a new day today um, I've been up and doing a little bit of work this morning oh, I hate admin it's actually so boring honestly like I get really excited about campaigns with brands that I'm working on and then when it comes to actually having to like edit and reply to emails I'm like oh, I want to do this <laughs> So I've kind of, I've, I've got into a routine where as soon as an email comes in, I reply straight away. I'm just in that routine now and it keeps me going. Otherwise, when it all builds up and piles up, ugh, honestly, like I would rather just bury myself underneath my duvet and not answer any of them. So yeah, that's what I've been doing this morning. I had a little bit of a tidy up of the living room yesterday um, after I started, I finished sowing my seedlings. Also, I am obsessed, absolutely obsessed with looking at my seedlings, weirdly obsessed with looking at my seedlings to the point where it's a little bit silly because I kept popping down every hour on the hour last night and this morning to check on the seedlings as if they were going to just sprout up out of the the soil within like less than 24 hours so um <laughs> to be honest it feels really nice that i'm this excited about them and i think it means that i'm going to look after them as best as i can um actually i want to show you my dining room because a few of you have had questions over like the last year what am i doing with the dining room so if you've been here for a little while you may remember that this used to be our dining room I actually used to have our dining table in it and then i decided to turn it into my home office but it just never really landed i think it's too much in like the heart and the hub of the home the other side of this kitchen the other side is the living room it's always very noisy it's always quite cold because the downstairs of the house is quite cold and it was always very echoey as well and with my work I have to do a lot of voiceovers and a lot of meetings and stuff so it just didn't sit and especially if we had people come and visit like my family my friends or Rob's family if they were here for a weekend I always felt like I couldn't really go and do work because they'd hear me talking and I get a little bit embarrassed so it would mean that I was falling behind on my work a little bit just so that you know what it looks like now this is kind of how it looks so obviously we had the ceilings plastered the end of last year I am in the process of cleaning out this room. So I've actually taken loads of stuff that was built up there, took that all to charity, and I've kind of boxed up and bagged up loads of things ready to go in the garage. Um, I've got like my autumn stuff, some bits and bobs that I've thrifted over time. And then I have, I have, and then I've also sold these dining chairs at the back. So these were my original dining chairs that I got with my original table six years ago now. I don't even know if it's more than that no six years ago now and I love them I always have but they are that very cold gray and as you know I have really come away from that whole tone and color palette so so this morning a girl got in contact with me on Facebook marketplace and I have a feeling that she's just kind of doing up her first house and she's looking for some cheap bargains and um, from what she was saying so I'm really happy to give them to her she's coming to collect them soon do you know what's really funny as well I think I say to you guys quite often like I am a bargain hunter I don't mind haggling I don't mind asking for a discount or what's your best price sort of thing I don't think it's rude as long as it's done in the right way and as long as you read the room sort of thing like I'm not going to be asking for discount on something that's already a steal but um she she said to me like what's your best price and I just thought go on girl like go on then I'll give you a little bit more money off because I love that I think that's like a really great trait to have so yeah I gave her a little bit of um money off and I said if you can come and get them today you can have them for this price so she's coming to grab them um but I'm just really happy that they seem to be going to a really nice home to be reused and loved on and um, I think she's actually going to upcycle them so I think she's going to sand off the black legs and redo them as well so yes I love that upcycling DIY queen um the other chairs that I do want to um give to a new home as well are these bouquet ones now I do really love them but I just don't have a spot for them and I'll probably regret I know I'm going to regret getting rid of these but these also do feel quite modern to me 
in the sense that with our new home I feel like we're going for a lot of traditional looking finishes and furnishings and these just sit a little bit too modern with the kind of Scandi legs this is all very Scandi and even the shape of it is very modern so I've worked those on Facebook they've got so much interest so I reckon they'll probably be sold by the end of the day as well yeah and then eventually this room will be empty and I think what I'm going to do is try and plan out what to do with this room because at the minute I still don't know we've got our dining table through those doors you can just see it through there and our living space through there so it's kind of like what do you do with a room like this that's the only thing that's confusing me because I think temporarily what I might do is just have it as kind of like another social space so if someone wants to go and sit in here on like the cozy chair in the corner um, and read a book or just chill out in a different room and it can just be like a, a bigger space just for chilling um but eventually eventually we are going to knock through that wall and make this an open kitchen dining area but even with that okay i need to speak to you about this because this is really really confusing me so guys i need your help desperately honestly if any of you are architects or in all seriousness if any of you guys are architects like interior designers that actually like mock things up and draw things and actually can give me like specific details when it comes to uk regulations on um kitchens knocking through walls building extensions current kind of like estimate prices and stuff i need help because that is stumping me at the minute i've never done anything like this in terms of renovating when it comes to like really serious work this feels like a big girl's job like this feels like okay you've actually got to do like project management lots of research get the right builders in try and get the best quotes but not go for cowboys and essentially we're going to probably live in a renovation for a long while and I just don't know if we're there yet I don't know if we're there yet financially because I have no idea how much it's going to be so the first option was opening up this wall that you can see behind me I have a feeling this is probably a supporting wall. I don't actually have any evidence for that, but it just feels like it might be. So it will probably need some sort of support beam along the top. How much does that sort of stuff cost? What um, things do I need to get signed up for that? Who do I speak to? What council, um, you know, legislations do I have to abide by? All of that stuff. And then also on top of that, if I do want to bring the kitchen out into the garden a little bit, like how do you go about that like it just it seems really intense and really like it's going to be expensive and I know it's going to be expensive and um, but I just need to kind of like know how much it's going to be where we can get the funds from do you have to put it on to like you remortgage your home to to do an addition like that do you just pay it all straight out of your pocket oh, I can't do that <laughs> so yeah if you've had any experiences or you know of anyone or if you are someone that can really help me with that I would so appreciate it but yes yeah, so with that in mind I actually think I'm going to do a little bit more of a kitchen upgrade up until we up until we are ready to actually knock through or knock through because at the minute the kitchen I know that we did a little bit of a makeover last year but it still just doesn't sit 100% right with me it still feels like oh my god is that girl for the chairs already one second oh my god please my memory is so bad so I left you guys and I went and gave the couple who were collecting the chairs from Facebook their chairs and um I just totally forgot that I was even talking to you, Sia. Yeah, that was them. They were so lovely. It was their first home they were buying. And she said she's just trying to find all the pieces, but they're so excited. Um, so yeah, it feels really nice to give the chairs to them. And I told them that I used um, Loof by French Chic Paint to paint the legs black so that they could match them up. I actually tried to give them a little tin of it, but I'm totally out of it. So that was annoying. Because I normally have like about half a tin at any given time. So I'm really confused why I don't have half a tin, but there we go. Anyway, I have also just been to the shops i decided that before it got dark out today i wanted to plant some more seedlings so i've actually gone to b and q i bought another propagator i think i spoke to you about this morning i spoke to you about this this morning i've decided i'm just going to get one because i have lots of vegetables to be growing so um i actually also picked up a couple more vegetables because rob said he would love me to grow cucumbers this year so i tried last year i actually bought a mini cucumber plant but they were just kind of bulging at the bottom i don't think I don't think they were potted out into the right space. I think they were constricted in their pot. So I'm going to pot some of these. There's 12 seeds in there. And then some lettuce. There are 250 seeds in here. Lettuce is so easy to grow. So I got some lettuce butterhead in King May making. And then I already have this red lettuce, which looks delicious and crispy. And then I also bought some okra seeds. Okra, I think, in other 
countries and cultures is known as lady fingers. I don't know if I'm getting that wrong though. But yeah, okra because in Nigerian culture we eat okra as a stew typically and it is really nice. Um, and I just feel like my dad's gonna be gassed if I and I'm able to grow okra from seeds. So yeah, they all kind of want planting out, they all kind of want sowing out at the same time and then you plant them out around the same time and then they come through around the same time. So it should be pretty easy. But yeah, I was laughing to myself as I have to show the guys in the vlog because I'm honestly buying propagators like the world is about to end and there's going to be a shortage of them because not only did I not have a propagator before, I now have like five of them. <laughs> so I ended up picking up another one of the Super 7 propagators. This is the windowsill one. And then did I show you mine? No, I haven't showed you. Look at my little seedlings. So they've all got a little bit of humidity going on because I've closed the vents, which are the red bits at the top. And once I start to see the seedlings come through and they're getting a little bit more established, I'll open the vents slowly so that they don't get, um, like I think it's called soil rot. So basically they can breathe and they don't rot on themselves. But yeah, it's going so well. And when I tell you, it's like, it's barely warm to the touch. I honestly was thinking, is it even on? But no, it is, it's working really well. So I got myself another one of those. I also picked up a normal windowsill propagator set. Now I was thinking for the lettuce, when I was watching videos about it, you don't typically grow it in this kind of structured format like this because you can kind of just scatter the seeds and they just grow how they grow. You don't have to be too particular with it. So I bought this one, which is a windowsill propagator set, but you don't, um, it doesn't have the heat pad with it. And the trays are slightly larger, so I could probably just like sew a couple of them into there. Same goes for the peas. I actually also just bought a typical module seed cell um, pot as well because I saw that's how everyone was doing it on YouTube and I thought if all else fails I can just pop some up into this and hopefully that should work as well. I also got a cover for it because they come separately but um, I've read that to get your seedlings going you really need to re retain the moisture so I got a cover which I can pop on all the way up until they're ready to start flourishing on their own and I can take the cover off. I also picked up from Home Bargains you will not believe the price of these, five pounds for each of these obelisks. Wait, I don't know why they get stuck together so easily. In the shop, I had to ask one of the men to pull them apart because the pressure of them like cements them together. But these obelisks were 4 99 each. So the issue that I had last year when I was growing my munch to peas was that they grew really well, really quickly, but I didn't establish them properly on a trellis or on like some strings. So they have like their climbers, they've got these little tendrils that hook onto things and they grow up and up and up and up and up. Um, but yeah, I didn't establish that very well last year. So they were kind of just growing in amongst each other and they ended up molding because I don't think they had enough like airspace and stuff. So this year, when I build my vegetable beds, the intention is to actually grow them properly up in an obelisk. Now I think you can do that for your peas that climb upwards and things like sweet peas, which are really pretty. So I've got these ones. I actually do have a couple of other obelisks, but they're hopefully a little bit bigger. I'm pretty sure I ordered them to be like this big. So I'm gonna use those for, I don't know, something else, but they were 4 99 I felt like I couldn't pass it up because I remember last year when I went into Home Bargains and I was doing some gardening shopping with mum, I saw them and I was like, an obelisk for five pounds? But there were none so i didn't know what they looked like and i feel like they sell out like that so i just grabbed myself two of those um and yeah that's it really i've also got a couple of bits that i like i need to stop buying stuff i did also grab some really cute little bits from home bargains so it is easter sunday next weekend what's the time because i've got a meeting Ooh, three minutes i'll be quick it's easter sunday next weekend and we've got rob's mum and dad and my mum and dad coming to our house and we're going to do a roast dinner i don't know how we're going to do a roast dinner for five people six people but we're going to try um and i wanted to dress the table up a little bit in a cute way now i know that i've got some spring um easter stuff from last year that are that are in the garage so i'm just going to go and grab those but i know that i didn't have these two little cute things so i just picked these up as well so the first one is this little guy oh my god he's so cute um i need to kind of look at the oh no look she's called sadie the bunny but yeah i don't feel like she would have been more than four or five pounds to be honest she's very lightweight made of that kind of don't know what it's called but very cute and then on this side in the kitchen I also I also picked up this little basket that has these little bunny ears on and the intention is to put a cloth in the inside like a napkin and then I'm going to bake some cookies and the cookies I'm going to bake are mini egg cookies or brownies or maybe both 
depending on how much time I have and how willing I am to impress um, because I just thought it would look really cute and be a nice little sweet treat for everyone but yeah and then I got these as well some little carrot looking sweets but they are really for Rob because he's more of a sweet guy than a chocolate guy but yeah so so adorable so that will be coming up in an upcoming vlog I'm sure I've just got back from the shops this morning. Um, it's half 10. That's pretty good going for me. I've started to become a bit of an early bird. I'm not sure if this is like a venture into adulthood thing or if it's just a phase, <laughs> but I like it because I've been being really productive uh, in the mornings, which is great because it kind of sets me up for the day and then I get to, you know, lunchtime at mid afternoon and I'm like, hmm, I've done all, all of my jobs. This is, this is strange. Normally I'm a big sloth and I don't awaken until, just before lunchtime sort of thing. So this is a whole new brand for me, but I really like it. Um, I actually went to bed really late last night, so I'm surprised that I woke up this morning because I was doing a little bit of finishing touches for some content with a brand that I'm working with over on Instagram, but I'm gonna tell you guys here because I'm really proud. Um, I'm actually working with Dunelm on an edit. So it's a list of all of my favorite pieces that we have in our home already. You guys will have known, especially if you know me over on Instagram as well, if you follow me there, you will see that I often work with them. So there are several pieces in our home that are from Dunelm that we love. And uh, yeah, they reached out like a couple of months ago and they were like, we would like you to do an edit with us. Like, would you be up for it? And I was like, uh, yeah, let me just bite your hand off right now. So yeah, I'm really proud and I'm really excited. So essentially it's a link that takes you to a part of their website that um, is actually all of my top pieces. So there are 37 picks on there and it includes my rugs, my curtains, bedding um, that I've got in the new guest bedroom, a couple of bedside tables, the famous extendable double curtain pole that you guys love as well, lots of cushions. I'm obsessed with their cushions at the moment, especially their frilled and scalloped edged, um, really chunky ones with the stripes on, obsessed. Obviously I, I love a stripe, you know that already. Um, and yeah, just loads of little bitty bits. Um, I've got under bed storage, I've got the bed from the guest bedroom, so gorgeous and I love the fact that it's got dark feet normally those beds have quite a like a light colored oak sort of um style like my dining table but that's got dark feet and I think that just makes it look so much more elevated and more expensive I'm going to leave a link to that down in this description box as well for you um as I say it's not an ad over here but I it was an ad over on Instagram so I, I just declare that just so that you guys know what I'm talking about and um, I've got a delivery and it's a very exciting one it's actually a present for Rob that he doesn't know about so I'm going to go and grab that this is the present I got Rob this is the Lumi recovery pod max and i think he's gonna actually just like lose his mind when he sees this because i have heard him talking about it for ages but he's not one to really buy himself like big gifts like that he's helped me so much with the house and he's just always so supportive and you know i just love him what excuse do you need so i decided to buy it for him and i mean i don't know if i'm endorsing his crazy behavior because essentially it's a pool like a tiny little tub thing that you put outside you fill it with cold water and ice if you want to have an ice bath and you get in it every morning and you sit in freezing cold water I mean he could literally just do that in our bathtub but you know things like this they're quite gimmicky but he really really wants one and I thought we could make quite a cool little section of the garden where it's incorporated as kind of like the um water therapy section um he loves stuff like that especially like in Newcastle they all like jump in the sea at like Christmas time boxing day and stuff and crazy crazy people but he loves it so I'm excited to show him that um yesterday I don't even know if I properly walked you through but I ended up planting all of my vegetables again wait did I show you that I can't remember but this morning they're all steamy again let me show you I know you're going to be interested <laughs> and look how steamy they all are these are the veggie ones and these are the flowers and then this is the lettuce even this box has got little bit of condensation on it which is good because it means this is a cheaper alternative and if you've got window space or you've just got a space where you know the sun hits you can just use one of these i think this is like four pounds or something which is good but yeah i'm just honestly absolutely obsessed with with those i i said to rob yesterday he was kept asking me for updates of what i was doing in the day because he's not here at the moment he's gone back up to newcastle for a couple of days and every time i had to update him with something i was like um, I've just been in the garden looking at my plants. Um, I've just planted up all of my vegetables and I'm just online buying things for the garden. <laughs> 
it honestly it's like um it's like an addiction it's like it takes over your body it's like the best disease ever gardening it just it honestly it takes over your brain your soul your whole existence i spend my mornings now instead of like aimlessly scrolling through twitter or tiktok i look at videos on gardening and i do research on how best to seed and sow and plant things up and i love it and um, i actually bought this from Amazon. I needed a gardening belt. I've got some gardening overalls for when it's getting really messy but I thought um, seeing as I'm going to be like a committed gardener now when I go out in the garden it's really annoying when you have to like carry so many things around because you always need so many tools and um, because you never know what you're gonna like find when you're looking at a certain patch of the garden you might need to like weed something you might need to snip something off you might need to dig something a little bit so I thought I'd grab this that is not real is this a real is this real no, it is real. I thought this was a kid's one. It was really a book. No, this is a kid's one. Is this a kid's one? This is a, a child's one. <laughs> okay, I don't actually think it's a kid's one. I think I, I'm gonna have to commit to it to get it on. They're gonna know that I've used it. I can't return it. So I bit fits. This was really affordable. It was like eight pounds or something on Amazon. And it was a really cute color. Um, oh, it's actually nice. Look, I think it does fit. Is this, is this right? Is this how you do it? Maybe up a little bit more. It's quite um, narrow, so I don't think it's going to keep you super clean, but it's more so just to have all of your tools. I'm such a little nerd. I can't deal. But you know, even if you need to like have a couple of these in and a, and a pen and um, some like twine or just things, I just always feel like I just can't carry enough when I'm in the garden. So um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with that. That's super cute. And for the rest of the day, I, I am actually tempted to go into the garage because it's slightly warmer than usual. I'm hoping that the garage isn't gonna be freezing cold. It is an absolute tip. Like it is like beyond, beyond messy. And I just need to get all of my tools back in their places. I actually need to hoover the floor of the garage because I normally cut my MDF in there. The floor is like sodden with damp. MDF dust, which isn't good, especially breathing it in. Oh dear, this is what we're dealing with. Old carpet, tools everywhere, and wood that I decide to keep. I have to keep from every single project just in case I will ever use it again.
it's a good few hours later we're looking at what three hours and this is how the garage is now looking um my back is broken but i have managed to put a load of stuff in the bin for the tip some old paint tins that i need to bring to the tip um you shouldn't throw paint in the bin in your household waste you should take it to the tip so that they can dispose of it environmentally friendly i have managed to sort out my tools for the most part and make them a little bit more ordered i've also managed to get rid of some stuff that was on there that just wasn't really making sense sorted through most of my paints as i say i've got a little section in the corner that are secondhand pieces that i need to flip eventually and things that um, I actually just need to put on Facebook Marketplace because we have no home for them anymore. Um, the barbecue, I don't know, I think we're maybe suffering a little bit of, um, what do you call it, mould in here because, yeah, it's got quite a lot of mould going on, which it didn't have the year before. Um, but over this winter, it's not been particularly freezing cold it's kind of been like warm in the days and then cold at night time so i feel like there is quite a bit of mold even on the painting shelves um it's not really on this side it's mainly just like this side of the garage but maybe it is because it's closest to the doors i don't know anyway i need to at some point in the next few weeks come in and clear all of the stuff off the shelves and spritz them down with white vinegar because that kills mold i'm sure and just give them all a clean so that I feel safe about using everything in the future and then obviously when it gets to the summer before we use the barbecue we're going to give it a real deep clean and we'll like burn everything out with no food cooking on it for a little bit but yeah my back hurts but I feel really good I can actually walk around the floor like I know it probably doesn't seem that good on the camera but I've done a good job I've got this little section here still so I've done basically half of the garage I'm going to leave this section for Rob because um quite a few bits in there that he owns and that says that he wants to keep i've also managed to make a dumping ground outside it's not very aesthetically pleasing but i've just put everything out here and i'm going to get rob to take all of this to the tip as well at the end of the week when he's back good morning i know i look like joe from you but um i'm having a bad hair day so we've thrown on a cap um guys some of my seedlings have sprouted. It has been 20, no, 48 hours and the cosmos have come through. What the hell? They're the only ones to come through so far, but um, they're really going strong, look. So this is one of the cosmos. Look at those bad boys. Look how, how high they've gotten. They were even much smaller than that last night. So you see this one at the front here, how how diddy that front one is. Um, that's how big they all were last night. And I went to bed, honestly, I was thinking about them. I was like, I can't wait to see what they look like in the morning. And they've got an absolutely huge. And I've also got some Cosmos over on this side as well, which is doing really well. The rest of them, nothing's come through so far. But um, I've got high hopes for them all. I also spread a layer of vermiculite over everything, as you can see, because it just helps to retain the moisture. I hope that I haven't um, stumped their light source, though. That's the only thing I'm worried about. But seeing those little sprouts coming through, I'm hoping that it's going to be fine. But that was such a lovely surprise this morning. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to see what else happens. So with this in mind, I was speaking to Rob last night. Um, I need to get some vegetable beds in and I was doing some research last night why is it so difficult to find the correct wood to make a vegetable bed I just want some untreated either original original redwood so not the sort of soft wood that they call redwood in the DIY stores or oak but that's really expensive it has to be untreated because you don't want any of the chemicals that they use to treat it to seep into the soil so I've heard like lots of gardeners say online just get untreated make sure you check the wood that you're using because you just don't want to cause any potential you don't want to, to create any potential seeping of any stuff that you just don't want going into your soil into your crop and you eating them so I was trying to look on all these websites and I'm also trying to look for quite thick boards that are about five centimeters by about 10 or 15 and then the length of them um undetermined because i'll cut it down anyway my beds that i'm going to make are approximately 1.2 by 1.8 um 
I feel like a lot of the gardeners say as well online you shouldn't really go much bigger than that because it's actually quite hard to harvest your crop when um, the beds are super big and you can't really get through to the middle so I'm gonna just do two slightly more maintainable sizes and we can add more in the future if we want to if I've, I feel like I'm gonna have the gardening bug so we could just add more but yeah so I'm gonna head over to some local timber merchants near me I've got something called Hughes and another one called Rose wood or rose timber or something so i'm going to go there i'm going to go speak to the people and see if they can just sort me out with some wood i'm going to go and do that today so in the next vlog i will be hopefully showing you what wood we've got this seedlings sprouting in their journeys hopefully maybe potting out into the garden because those cosmos i reckon i could have just put them straight into the soil so i reckon i'll be planting some of those out and what i might do with the rest of my cosmos seeds is just sprinkle them around patches in the garden where i would like it but it's just to find some time in the garden because at the minute i've got so many indoor projects and the weather isn't great outside so um yeah it's just finding the time but anyway i hope that you enjoyed the vlog as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one take care of yourself guys bye